Hello there, I'm Mount Payne 27 and this is Dean of Doom, the show where you give grades to classic and contemporary Doom wads. Why? Because ranking things is fun. Today's episode will be dedicated to Kama Sutra, a 2005 megawad co-authored by Czech mappers and competitive speedrunners Adolf Gusta Vojta and Jakub Method Razak. A CAC Award and Mock Award recipient, Kama Sutra made quite a splash when it came out, as much for its ribaldry as its intense, creative, and high-quality maps. It patterns itself on the kind of doom its creators loved, specifically the proto-slaughter of Hell Revealed, the brutal beauty of Alien Vendetta, and the precise, robust snappiness of Scythe. Newcomers looking for something off the beaten path are sure to find something here that will tickle their fancy, and probably more than they bargained for. When I first played this set, before Dean of Doom debuted, it handed me my well-done rear end on a silver platter. The second playthrough was about salvaging dignity, but the third was an absolute treat. Kama Sutra is an essential text on Doom combat, and one of the most unique and vibrant megawads of its day. Please note that viewer discretion is advised for today's video, and if you're seeing ads on your device, you can blame the litigious representation of Metallica, Led Zeppelin, and Michael Jackson. So, here's how the show works. Every map gets one grade for quality and one for difficulty. Quality grades go from A to F. Grade A levels are fun, memorable, visually distinctive, creative, and a fair challenge. We grade difficulty from X to E. X for extreme, E for easy, A through D in between. Keep in mind, my idea of a great map is probably not the same as yours, but that's okay. Disagreeing is part of the fun, after all. At the end of the day, this show is about spreading the joy of doom. So let's do so. Before we start, the rules are, we play on ultraviolence and must pistol start each level, I need to play the wad twice before reviewing it, saves are allowed, and we go for 100% kills in all levels, making exceptions when it's just not worth it. I play on Z Doom, with compatibility set to Doom Strict. Now, to the wad. Map 1, Into the Underground. A red brick fort held down by a skeleton crew of zombies and imps, Into the Underground is a comfortable start, markedly improved by the check's choice of MIDI. Pay no heed to the bars between you and this secret blur sphere, punch your way to a shotgun and clean house. Continuous players will want to peek behind this pillar for a switch that reveals a teleporter to the super shotgun. All things considered, this is a pretty bland opener for such an infamous map set. Grade B, difficulty E. Map 2, The Hidden Engine. A stiff, mechanical two-hitter from Gusta's idea, man. The Hidden Engine is essentially a hub room, three challenge fights, and an office with a helpful hidden item. Oh, and a soft lock. Whether or not you use the Inviso to throw off the chain gunners, this pop-up imp obstacle course chafes. The other two paths are more straightforward shootouts. Don't rush through this hallway or you're a doom guy sandwich. The hidden engine is unmemorable and a bit clunky. Grade C, difficulty D. Map 3, Mr. Adolf Kill You. It's always nice to see early maps in megawads make an effort to not be filler, and Mr. Adolf Kill You is definitely not filler. The first fight forces you to juggle hit scanners, a pain elemental, a cacodemon, and a mancubus with seven rockets and a handful of shells, and the yellow key fight is a real squeeze unless you find the map's namesake secret. Suffice to say, Goose's sense of humor is controversial. Grade B, difficulty C-. Map 4, Water Base. Water Base's start will seem unfair if you don't take the exit teleporter right away. With the shotgun, you can snipe the commandos and pick off the monsters that survive infighting. Don't forget about the super shotgun. This crowd of imps and pair of revenants outside are best approached with two barrels. I like that you get to run around in the water and inspect this level from all sides. So often in this situation, map makers will gate you in or block you with invisible walls. Gusta lets you explore a bit and even knock off future threats like this zombie bushwhack that shows up in the start room after you get the blue key. In the text file, Gusta reveals that this was his very first Doom 2 map. In that case, well done. Grade B, difficulty C. Map 5, Klondike. More chipper than its nervy midi would lead you to assume, Klondike strikes gold with its bag of tricks, ornate detailing, and exciting combat. These alien vendetta-esque caves at the start are filled with beasts as brown as the walls, and you'll be ill-equipped to handle them if you do like me and miss the shotgun and green armor behind you at the start. Whoops. The super shotgun in the waterside cave makes chopping down demonic prospectors a bit easier, and I recommend scooping up the Mega and fleeing before the final fight gets going. I forgot how much I like Goose's secrets. Curious players can leap into this crevasse for a Soul Sphere, and if you're extra lucky, you can happen upon Method's Grave. Rest in peace, and thanks for the armor. Grade B+, difficulty C+. Map 6, Research Complex. Hell revealed fan fiction in all but name, Research Complex can hit first-timers pretty hard with its ambushes, thin ammo balance, lack of room to maneuver, and vindictive enemy placement. The archfile guarding the yellow key and the cyberdemon blocking the exit are rather callous towards bad ammo managers or lousy secret finders. Thankfully, I'm not the former because I went 0 for 3 on the latter. I don't like maps that expect the player to lean on prior knowledge to beat them, but Research Complex is nowhere near as unyielding as Yonatan Donner in a bad mood. 
Grade C+, Difficulty B-. Map 7, Colosseum. A pure fun, dead simple iteration that pits you against a sold-out crowd of mancubi, a courtyard full of cacos, and an angry army of arachnid scalpers. This is a great map to turn off your brain for. Gusta and Method load you up with rockets and cells, and if you've got a few megawatts under your belt, it's essentially target practice and a brisk stadium stairs workout. Pro tip for the last two cyber demons: standing at the edge of the Colosseum will draw the artillery goats toward you, and one of them will invariably get caught in the exit teleporter. That'll allow you to face his buddy, Mano a Mano, and turn him into a fine red mist on your way out. Grade A minus, difficulty B minus. Map 8. Time is ticking out. Uncharacteristically stagnant for a Gusta joint, time is ticking out essentially staples two maps together. A small Hell Revealed 2 style brick and metal tech base with a hot start, and a stone keep that hits you with gushes of enemies as the sun sinks. Notice how the clock on the brown building shows time passing, with the light getting dimmer the more keys you collect. It's a cool idea, but aside from being cool, I don't quite see the purpose it serves. If you have trouble getting the last arch file and crop of imps to teleport in, loop back to the second circular temple room where revenants were and they should show up. Grade B minus, difficulty B minus. Map 9, The Holocaust. Not sure why it's called the Holocaust. More of that famous Czech humor, I suppose. The Holocaust may look rough around the edges, but in Gusta's own words, gameplay is surely the main thing. Armed with two helpful secret ammo stashes and some courage, the centerpiece shoot out on the asphalt is a thing of beauty. A small taste of the manic intensity that will soon become commonplace in this megawad. The warehouse fight with the archfile and revenant security guards is subtler but also exciting. This map is quick and breezy, especially if you know it. But Kama Sutra has not yet begun to fight. Grade B difficulty B. Map 10, to be or not to be. If you're ever asked the question, what do Shakespeare, Michael Jackson, and Hell Revealed 2 have in common, now you'll know what to say. To be or not to be is easily Kama Sutra's least fun map so far. Once again, Method gives you hardly any room to move, prioritizes SSG-based combat that can be exploited with infighting, door fighting, and patience, and dabbles in Doom Cute that does nothing to tie together its hodgepodge of influences. Maybe the text file can offer some insight. Method says, okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Mowing down grunts with the super shoddy doesn't necessarily bother me, but the four cyber demon duels do. They're repetitive and unnecessary. In Hell Revealed 2, this might have passed for a break from the incessant abuse, but in Kama Sutra, it's an airball. Grade D, difficulty A minus. Map 11, execution. Yikes. That's a way to say hello. Execution's hyper-hostile start is actually pretty carefully calibrated on top of being thematically appropriate. I guess we have Method to thank for that. You should have just enough time to escape the electric chair, blast through the firing squad, and get your hands on some health and bigger guns before Mr. Adolf kill you. The map gets decisively more lenient after you get the BFG, which you'll need to let rip immediately or die. Gusta takes after Scythe more than the Hell Reveals here. His spatial efficiency, red cavern aesthetic, and fondness for bony boys tell the tale, and the text file confirms it. Execution also serves as a warning to players that ass whoopings await those bold enough to continue. Grade B plus, difficulty A minus. Map 12, King Arena. The gold standard for Tyson maps as far as I'm concerned, King Arena has a little something for everybody. On top of the expected imp and revenant punching, Gusta tasks the player with some more sophisticated challenges, like wrangling a hell knight, revenant, and baron into killing a mancubus in this small space so you don't have to take up sumo wrestling. You'll be tempted to use the invuln to take care of these imps, but save yourself a headache and bolt for the blue door. Five revenants are waiting by the egg it for you. Goose's most ingenious flourish will only be discovered by 100 percenters who don't want to save every bullet and shell in the map for this cyber demon. If you can get him to fit a rocket through this bloodfall, it'll cause a chain reaction of barrel explosions, which kickstarts a crusher that will end his reign. With the exception of its music choice, everything about King Arena has aged gracefully. Grade A. Difficulty B+. Map 13, The Holocaust 2. Every time I come back to this map, I expect a half-baked meme, and I'm always dumbfounded by how good it is. The action is frenetic and outlandish, doubling down on Map 9's pop-up street fight and violating maximum occupancy regulations everywhere it can. <laughs> The whole of Kama Sutra has a thing with Doom Cute, but the Holocaust 2 puts on a goddamn Doom Cute clinic. The subway stop, busted elevator, and helicopter are whistle worthy, but this overturned Mack truck is so cool you forget to ask what the hell it's doing on top of a building. For all its parlor trickery, what impresses me most about this map, and Gusta in general, is the devil may care attitude. These fights are messy, bold, brutal, and even darkly funny at times. It seems to me the fewer f 
tasks Gusta gives, the stronger he becomes. And I gotta hand it to the man. He made me compliment the sequel to The Holocaust. Grade A, difficulty B+. Map 14, Dog Eat Dog. I've heard it said that Kama Sutra is a truer sequel to Hell Revealed than Hell Revealed 2, and Dog Eat Dog seems like pretty strong evidence for that claim, with its Rise of the Triad soundtrack, unflashy detailing, and rambunctious action. To me, this is the most inherently fun map in the set so far. It's a sugar rush of anarchy. Crisscrossing projectiles, seething flocks of cacos, monsters infighting, cyber demons stomping around, and heaps of rockets and cells for you to fling in every direction. Gusta's generous Megasphere allotment encourages fearless attacking. I distinctly remember this map in particular, teasing me out of my comfort zone of careful play once upon a time. And what a thrill it was. This map is the definition of never a dull moment and throws Kama Sutra into overdrive. Grade A. Difficulty A-. Map 15, Miss Sporty. The charming, hilarious Miss Sporty is probably one of the reasons why Kama Sutra won 2005's Mock Award. Lee Jackson's Manic Midi is the perfect fit for this map, which practically jumps up and down at the opportunity to show you all this neat stuff. True to its name, Miss Sporty is an athletic center overflowing with sights to take in. There's a mixed doubles match going down on center court, but it looks like the tennis balls are mad as hell, and they're not going to take this anymore. Unfortunately, there's nobody left alive to time your world record 100-meter dash on the end indoor track. If you feel like drowning your sorrows, there's a bar and bowling alley in the back. Boy, these strike animations sure are getting realistic. The complex also has a swimming pool, high dive, and locker room. Keep in mind this is all vanilla, and this wad is 17 years old. The jump from the diving board to the megasphere is kinda tricky, but worth it as much for the goody as the encouragement. If you take Miss Sporty's secret exit, you'll miss out on one of Goose's most impressive stunts yet. This Wild West shooting arcade game is probably the coolest thing you're gonna see all day. Miss Sporty's SSG heavy combat floats my boat just fine, but it's the outrageous parade of visual gags that lives rent free in my head. It's an all time classic, grade A, difficulty B. Map 31, Devastation. Kama Sutra's first secret map is a melting pot of influences, directly inspired by Heretic E1M5 and Hell Revealed Map 22, but also reminiscent of No Guts No Glory from Alien Vendetta, Devastation's monster moats, archfile cage snipers, revenant parapets, and turret cyber demons make a daunting first impression, but after a vigorous minute of BFG work, the excitement wanes, and you're left with maybe one more actual fight, and a lot of janitorial work. Gusta's style feels cramped here, the closed layout and excess of clustered immobile enemies that can be peekaboo Food, killed from afar or shredded by other monsters greatly reduces the shock factor. By contrast, Alien Vendetta's super secret map mandates direct confrontation, and resistance is futile, gave the player more room to move and more active threats to deal with. Devastation is an improvement on Hell Revealed 2's interpretation of this trope, but only because it's shorter. Grade B, difficulty A+. Map 32, Anger Management. I've come to consider this the better of Kama Sutra's two secret maps. It's feistier and faster than Devastation, with the caveat that you must find the secret red key and get the BFG. Going through this map without plasma weapons will teach you the meaning of its title. The BFG turns these up-close cyber encounters into the work of a few seconds, but with just the rocket launcher and SSG, they're hard work. Questionable secret content aside, this is Method's strongest map in the set. A test of your footwork, reflexes, and bravery with cyber demons. Grade B, difficulty A. Map 16, Leeds Castle. According to the text file, this map's opening fight was inspired by Gusta's real-life experience of visiting England and telling a group of locals that he didn't like tea. I wouldn't know Leeds Castle from Castle Wolfenstein, so somebody else can weigh in on this map's verisimilitude, but as usual, Gusta excels at crafting fun details that draw the player in. I know it was 2005, but a lot of this 3D work seems unnecessary, and that goes for the whole of Kama Sutra now that I think about it. The spiral staircase is neat, though. Leeds Castle's fluid layout is a big plus. I like how you can start in the courtyard and circle all the way around without backtracking. It's convenient for scooting past this flock of pain elementals, getting the plasma rifle, and ambushing them from behind. Finding the yellow and blue key switches is the map's Soul low light. The stone elevator is unintuitive. It leads to a cramped barren dungeon. The two switches spawn a surprise cyber demon. Bloody hell. Grade A minus, difficulty B plus. Map 17, Cyber Machine. One of Kama Sutra's more memorable maps for all the wrong reasons, Cyber Machine is made up of three fights, all in fierce competition for the title of worst in the megawad. The first encounter is a stilted platforming section where you have to hop across the canal on lowering platforms without missing a jump, all while super shotgunning cacodemons. With practice, it's not horrible, but it feels like Goost is apologizing for his own idea with the blur sphere and all these health packs, which isn't a good sign. Then there's this fight, which times its 
its crusher wall such that only one of these four cyber demons is exposed for about 10 seconds at a time. You're supposed to run in circles and shotgun them, and when they're dead, you still have to wait for the crushers to cycle so you can press the switches in order and lower the central teleporter. It's one of the most mechanical fights I've ever seen in Doom. The finale is only slightly less rote. It's a symmetrical arena with murders of revenants in each corner and arch files in each face of the central building. After enough time has passed, cyber demons are released from each of the four elevators, and that's the whole map. I suppose not all of Gusta's ideas can be winners, but boy does this one drag. Grade D, difficulty A-. Map 18, the train is approaching. What a stupendous map. Exploring the same aesthetic terrain as Alien Vendetta's Hillside Siege and Clandestine Complex while radically improving on their layouts and combat, Gusta creates an extremely flattering homage to Lisa Mansky and Anthony Soto. The train is approaching as Gusta's most polished, fluid, and neatly calibrated map in Kama Sutra. An unbroken flow of firecracker fights forecasting his Plutonia 2 maps, especially nuclear horror, but in my opinion, topping them all. Though I love Gusta's Doom Cute Addiction, the more restrained decoration here feels like a mature decision, and it's obvious that more energy than usual went into gameplay. The map's lone shortcomings are the spider-webbing route you need to take to finish it, and its malignant case of what did that switch do-itis. In Gusta's defense, he does sort of point you in the right direction, but he could have reduced the number of bullet points on this map's itinerary and it would have lost nothing. Having found all the keys and pressed all the colorful buttons, you can cheese the last fight by parking yourself by this slime fall, which is just too tall for the monsters to descend, grab the BFG, and punch your ticket out of here. Grade A. Difficulty B+. Map 19, Natural, a thorny map that Gusta himself wasn't wild about, Natural labors to follow Map 18's act, suffering from a restrictive layout, vague pathing, and mediocre fights. The cyber demon in the hub will harangue you every time you come back here unless you're somehow lucky enough to get him in fighting with these zombie men. He's useful for killing the cacodemon and undead flash mobs, but I still debate whether he's worth the trouble to keep alive. The two nasty archfile traps come down to how many cells you've got in your pack, and the horde guarding the exit is dumber than a bag of hammers. You won't have to lift a finger to make him destroy each other. I think this is the first time I didn't resort to id clipping through this red door, because this switch hidden in plain sight doesn't look familiar at all. You'd think Gusta would be content to just let the red key open the red door, but no. You have to get the red key, activate the red switch which opens red bars blocking a switch that opens the red door. I think I'm going cross-eyed just reading that sentence. Come on, man. Grade C, difficulty A-. Map 20, Traps. Uncharacteristically ugly, clumsy, and mean-spirited of Gusta, Traps... That's nice. Traps. Traps. Gee, I wonder why it's called Traps. Even without the wily e. Coyote antics, Traps is an under-detailed rubbish heap that commits numerous mapping sins. Nukage floors of the same color don't consistently damage you. Multiple invisible walls lazily block you from going where Gusta doesn't want you to, which I had praised him for avoiding back in map 4, and this 3D bridge will break if you look at it funny. The map's only worthwhile fight is a preposterous archvile rager that I could have beaten handily if I didn't take my stupid pills this morning and forget about the secret invulnerability right here. What seems to separate a great Gusta map from a mess like this is navigability. Traps is a cattle shoot compared to Dog Eat Dog or the train is approaching, force-feeding you enemies in excess, when Gusta normally lets you dance around or flee and regroup. Despite its crappy ending, Kama Sutra Episode 2 is still my favorite. Grade D+, difficulty A. Map 21, Diablo's Heart. Is it just me, or does it feel warm in here? Ruby red and full of dread, Diablo's heart plays like a scythe hell map but goostified. Squeak past the archfile mob, wiggle through the imps as the invuln clock ticks down, grab a shotgun, fight through the cave, and take a teleporter to the spider mastermind lookout, where a rocket launcher awaits you. From here, the map is essentially one. Any damage you take from the hell knight and revenant shooting range can be offset with megaspheres, and you can rush the blue key hallway with the BFG, kill the cyber demon at the exit, and work your way back with a full pack of cells. Revenge is a dish best served green. There's really only one way to play Diablo's heart, but but it's a creative scenario, and a nice tone setter for the final stretch. Grade B+, difficulty B. Map 22, Fireplay. A procedural clunker only barely redeemed by its ominous mood and the effort invested in these bridges, Fireplay is a 15 minute long peekaboo shooter. These revenants can't touch you, the prison room is a joke, the two cyber demons are immobile and unlikely to deal you a death while you slow roll them, and the monster blocking line depths on the key perimeter turn every fight they touch into a brainless rocket dump and make the demons look stupid as hell. Forward all complaints to Method. Gusta is only responsible for the ending. Grade D+, difficulty B-. Map 23, A Little Big Massacre. A 
decent slaughter effort and the Source of Kama Sutra's credits image, A Little Big Massacre features a lot of stationary monsters in an open, hell-revealed-style playing field. After grabbing the SSG and rocket launcher, progressing is a matter of making risky forays into enemy territory for ammo and then using that ammo to claim real estate. Going for the BFG can expedite this process, but don't count on that bridge to hold your weight. The map culminates in a nasty exit fakeout. In the text file, Gooster reports that Method nailed this fight on his first try. I tend to forget about this map and its zany climax whenever I return to Kama Sutra. It's not bad, just surrounded by too much quality. Grade B+, difficulty A. Map 24, The Gift from Got. Depending on your familiarity with The Gift from Got, it could take you anywhere from 20 minutes to a couple of business days to finish. Coincidentally, that's also how long it takes a new computer monitor to ship after you punch a hole in your old one. Method must have been a huge Hell Revealed 2 fan, because he hides not one, not two, but three critical weapons and secrets. The super shotgun is in this pit, the rocket launcher's in the slime, and the BFG opens when you stand on a desk and shoot this exposed off texture. With just the plasma and shotgun, this map would be an unholy slog. You'd have to chip away at Mancubi, Barons, and Archviles with the shotgun, Kamikaze point-blank cyber demons with the plasma, all while suffering the shame and rage of a hundred unusable rockets in your pack. What the hell was Method thinking? Played correctly, the gift from Got is passable, with few shakeups to the brain dead rocket and BFG spam, but it's quite clear by this point that Gusta is Kama Sutra's real gift from God. Grade D, difficulty A. Map 25, Cowface. Loosely inspired by Hell Revealed Map 25 and named after the image Gusta saw on his own auto map, Cowface is bloody, ferocious fun that brooks no bullshit or cautious play, lighting a literal fire under the ass of start room campers and pouring crowds of chain gunners, revenants, hell knights, and cacodemons into the wrathful end of your rocket launcher. Two pointers for first timers. One, hugging the archfile wall at the start gives you a megasphere, and two, the plasma rifle platforms lower when you interact with them. Mega spheres are abundant, encouraging the kind of manic play that makes Gusta's maps great. Midway through writing this review, I became curious about whether the BFG could be acquired with a single key, so I went back and played the map again. Turns out, it can. I ended up beating the map safeless by chaining together power-ups and flying by the seat of my pants. Cowface is the biggest power surge in Kama Sutra since Dog Eat Dog. Grade A, difficulty A. Map 26, Kill Bill. Cowface's bigger, meaner, older brother gets off to a hotter start and packs twice the wallop in terms of monster count, but the BFG is available much earlier, rockets and cells are bottomless, and you can find seven megaspheres to top off between orgies of blood. The BFG's no Hattori Hanzo sword, but it'll have to do. The respawning hit scanners and archfile spiked revenant posses at the start are more bothersome than lethal, but Kill Bill's cyber demons give major cause for alarm. If not treated immediately, the two that spawn in this style can cause negative health effects such as death, the pairs of red switch guards can sideswipe the slow-footed, and the jumbo imps that follow these teleporting arch files can get you on the chin if you don't know they're coming. The worst part of Kill Bill is deciphering what Gusta wants from you progression-wise. To get the red key, you need to take a one-sided teleporter that is not clearly marked at all. This is definitely another instance where I may have cheated to progress in playthroughs past. You know, I never really thought about it like this before, but Gusta is like Doom's Quentin Tarantino. He spins violent, non-linear tales with a sense of twisted humor, and every Everybody wishes he would make more stuff. Grade A, difficulty A+. Map 27, Stairway to Heaven. The uber gimmicky Stairway to Heaven, scored by Zed Leplin's copyright-free song of the same name, lacks the punch of the last two maps, but will appeal to those, like me, who appreciate Gusta's singular imagination. It's Kama Sutra's version of Afterlife from Hell Revealed. Gusta likens it to mini-golf in space, with each connected segment playing like its own self-contained challenge. You collect one weapon per hole, if you will, and the map culminates in large-scale battles around the rocket launcher, SSG, and plasma weapons. Most of the monsters here will kill each other, so don't let the high enemy count scare you. In fact, after the rocket launcher stage, Stairway to Heaven practically completes itself. There's almost no challenge involved in killing the fire blue eyed brick monster's minions, and the BFG segment is a big bland infight party. As usual, Gusta's sector art and rejection of conformity are a joy to witness, but Stairway to Heaven is a step down from his best stuff. Grade A minus. Difficulty, B+. Map 28, oh, I don't want to. Jakob Method Razak's final contribution to Kama Sutra is a steaming pile of manure. A loving homage to post-mortem from Hell Revealed, Hard Target was also designed to be its Megawad's ultimate challenge. In achieving that goal, Hard Target became inaccessible to all but the most patient, anal-retentive, and masochistic of players. The map is symmetrical, incredibly repetitive, simplistic, 
grindy, and dull. It took me 15 minutes just to muck out the four revenant pens and arch file cages at the start, a monotonous task broken up every 60 seconds by return trips to the hub for rad suits. You'll spend the remainder of your time pumping rockets into monster cages above and below you, pumping rockets into dribbling streams of teleporting enemies, and killing cyber demons up close in narrow corridors. I can't imagine trying to UV max this map without the BFG, which is once again hidden in a non-secret secret, which incidentally also takes care of the two cyber demons who keep cheap shouting you while you're regrouping at the hub. The worst part of Hard Target is its ending, which inundates the map with cacodemons and over 60 pain elementals, rendering traversal through the poison for cells, rad suits, and health essentially impossible. I'm invoking the it's just not worth it clause here. It's not even possible to UV max this map because in Z-Doom this arch file doesn't pop up, so f*** it. Hard Target is completely out of step with the rest of Kama Sutra, and its brand of map design belongs with the dodos. Grade F difficulty X. Map 29, I'm just the Doom Addict. I've never played a Duke Nukem game, so it's distinctly possible that several references have already gone over my head in this episode, but I'm just the Doom Addict in particular, with its cityscape backdrop, Duke music, room over room, and lifelike environments pines to belong to a build engine game. Even the map title seems to lament Gusta's attachment to Doom's more primitive technology. He admits in the text file to having lost inspiration for hard scenarios, opting to pattern his penultimate map on Scythe and Plutonia's more urban designs. As a result, Result, I'm Just a Doom Addict plays like a sprawling magnum opus without the combat to back it up. Don't get me wrong, I go gaga for Goose's world building, but Kama Sutra thrives on violence, and this map is a little too demure for the slot it's in. I also don't see the point of all the Nazi iconography or the irreverent SS appearance at the very end. Probably another joke or reference I'm not getting. Anyway, I think my issue with this map is the same issue I have with the entire last episode. In tone and intensity, it's very inconsistent, and fails to live up to the potential it showed in episode 2. Grade B, difficulty, a minus. Map 30. Uh, so, if for some reason you are under the age of 18, please proceed to the timestamp pictured. Everybody else, I'm gonna need you to act your age for a minute. So, yeah. The final boss of Kama Sutra is a naked lady lying on her back, and you kill her by shooting rockets into her open vagina. The symbol at the top of the screen means picha in Czech, which is their not-so-nice way of referring to the female genitalia. This is easily the most notorious and often discussed map in the Megawad, essentially Gusta's calling card, and a landmark in the history of Doom modding. I'd find it difficult to make any further comment without referencing One Man Doom's review of Kama Sutra. Doom writer KMXE12 makes a pretty compelling argument that picha brings Kama Sutra full circle as a metaphor for creation and love sharing. Put crudely, Kama Sutra is Adolf Voita and Jakub Brzak's baby, and also a love letter to their favorite wads. Their book contains 32 pages of pleasure for the player to experience. Players can engage with their work directly, but the wad creators can only sit back and receive that attention. Maybe this academic explanation suits, or maybe Peach is just a juvenile joke. Either way, I think it's pretty funny. Grade A, difficulty, D. The G-rated version of Kama Sutra's final map is a nitwitted cyber demon carousel that you just need to survive until a pillar in the center lowers. Grade F, difficulty B+. So, it's kind of a shame that Kama Sutra is widely remembered as the one with the huge vagina at the end, because the 31 maps leading up to it comprise one of the most varied and compelling sets in the history of Doom for its day. Wedding the best of Hell Revealed 1 and 2 with some lessons from Alien Vendetta and Eric Alm circa 2003, Gusta and Method, but mostly Gusta, created a sprightly brand of combat all their own, and patented a style of quirky humor within a rich world of vanilla Doom cute. Kama Sutra is also one of the most inconsistent non-community projects ever made, with both of its creators rolling strikes and gutter balls. For what it's worth, I love playing and reviewing wads that are like boxes of chocolates, and it's exactly this kind of fearless experimentation that makes this community so great. My final grade for Kama Sutra is an A-. Difficulty-wise, I was really expecting this wad to be harder, but I guess it's more submissive to players who know its tricks. Yeah, yeah, laugh it up. Let's give it a difficulty grade of A-. Now for my Dean's list. Valedictorian, Map 15, Miss Sporty. Salutatorian is a tie between Map 14, Dog Eat Dog, and Map 18, The Train is Approaching, Class President, Map 28, Hard Target, and the dunce cap goes to Map 28, Hard Target. Kama Sutra also gets an honor roll, which includes Map 7, Colosseum, Map 12, King Arena, Map 13, The Holocaust 2, Map 16, Leeds Castle, Map 25, Cow Face, Map 26, Kill Bill, Map 27, Stairway to Heaven, and Map 30, You Know What. 
Thank you very much for watching, and please feel free to share your thoughts in the wall down below. I'd love to hear what you think, and I'll heart your comments to let you know I've read them. Now I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge my generous patrons. Aaron Allen, Absolute Nothing, Agile Jackson, Agu XYZ, Alec Wehrman, Alex Max, Alex Topfer, Artisan Talzar, Bo Hagenbotham, Beatbeard, Ben Barrett, Birdburn, Blind as a Mat, Builder Sith, Whitefire, Kappa Bitch, Kali Bluefin, Cheese Wheel, Chris Duthat, Chris O'Neill, Christopher Hart, Christophine Place, Cutman Mike, Dan, Dave Davidson, Delirium, Doot Yourself, Dorothy Miller, Eggboy, Ember, Emma Essex, Endless Moose, great name, Faithful, Felix Wilson, Francis T218, General Roasterock, Glenn Marmon, Goody, Griffin Upchurch, Hyakcho, In Captivity, Jeff Hibbert, Jeff Sharilla, Jose Ballestero, Josh Ballard, Jude, Just Some Schmuck, Just Great 98, Camille Bernadotte, Killplane, Leon Staten, Logan Lazalva, Lumnol, Mark Rowland, Master Drew 117, Matt, Matthew Gower, Matty Light 1990, Michael Akins, Miracle Water, Mixer, MK2021, Moko Mothman MM47, Mosicon, Myolden, Nafferty, Neurometry, Knights 108, Number 26, NX Avery, Omnibot, Orion Burke Pool, Painful Hill 72, Pezavang Jaj, Philip Coffee, Pixel Perfect PT, Pyro She, Quibs, Randy A, Red Doomed Earth, Reese, Reese Anderson, Rune, Sean Doherty, Sega Monkey, Sid Menon, Space Clanka, Spinner 8, Stone Mason, Stupid Nick, Sunriser, Sylvester Priss, Tarakushino, That Guy Known as Will, The Cloptologist, The Dinosaur Heretic, TJG1289, Trilby Trillion, Turbine 2K5, Ultra Cow, Why Bemo Not a Crab, and William Huber. Thank you. I appreciate every one of you. This is Mount Payne 27, and I'll see you in the next episode of Dean of Doom.